so so easy and today we're going to be sewing the nautical expanding tote bag now although I'm using nautical fabrics in um, reds blues and whites you can of course do this tote bag in any color combinations that you like so the first thing to decide is whether you're going to add your applique onto the pocket I'm going to have some dark um, denim pockets on the bottom and I thought it would be really nice to add a really bright red shiny applique to it so I've got my anchor here this will be printed off as part of your pattern and I've traced it onto some heat and bond and I'm now just going to iron that onto the reverse of this nice bright red satin and then we'll come back and we'll start to add the applique onto the outside pocket so my little applique piece is ready, it's got the heat and bond on the back and it's cut out. I need to decide whereabouts on the pocket I'm going to have it. So I know the pocket's going to have a centre seam, so I don't want to put it over the seam. So I want to put it somewhere here. Part of this is going to form the base of the bag, the part is going to form the side, and there's also going to be a seam allowance at the top. So I think somewhere about there will be just right. So I'm going to iron that into place and then stitch around. Of course the appliques are optional so um, if you want to you can do that and then we'll come back and look at assembling the pockets. So my applique is in place and I'm now going to put the pocket lining. I want my bag to have a nice little bright um, stripe of red so I've used this red satin for the lining and I'm going to match up the top of the pocket edges here and just pin along and then sew with a regular half inch seam. So once your pocket is stitched along this top hem, I'm going to open it out and press it and I've just pressed mine a little unevenly. So as you can see there I've pressed it so that the inner lining of the pocket peeks through a little bit on the outside. It gives it like a, a faux piping look and then I've top stitched along the edge of the, po the pocket on the darker fabric there just to hold that in place. So now we're going to set these two pockets aside and work on the outside of the bag. So it's time now to work on the outer panel for the bag. This is the main outer panel itself. This is the pocket that we've already started. I'm just going to line that up so that it's square on one side of the fabric here and it's square along the bottom. That's good. And then just pop a few pins in place and all I need to do right now is just baste this in place to make sure that it's going to stay exactly where I need it. So all I'm going to do is just add in a few pins, take it to the machine and then just within the seam allowance I'm going to baste along the bottom and up these side pieces. Um, when I do that I'm also going to put the two, um, two pieces together to make sure that I'm doing the same on each side. I don't want it to be slightly out later on. I want the height on the side panels to be the same. Okay, so that will do. I'm going to now baste these two pockets in place on my main bag panel. So now that our outer pocket is basted into place, you need to just take your ruler or measure and um, I've got a disappearing ink marker. You can use a chalk or something like that. And from this outer edge, measure in three inches and draw a line. Same at this edge, measure in three inches, draw a line. Then measure up from the bottom, another three inches, draw a line all the way across, and then draw a line straight down the center of the bag. And these four lines are gonna be stitching lines. So take this to your machine, do the lines on both sides, and stitch down here, down the center, and three inches up from the bottom. Where you have the pockets just here, do a little bit of reinforcing at the top of here just to make sure that that's going to be nice and strong and then we'll come back and start assembling the zipper pocket. So once the pocket is now in place and all the stitching lines are completed, at the bottom corner you need to cut out that corner. So leave the stitching intact on the main piece and cut out just on the outside of the stitching here and at this other corner just here. Okay, so these are going to form the base of our bag. So later on, that will form the base and this will fold in and form the sides. So do this for both sides and then we'll work on the pocket. So this is an optional step if you want to add an outside zipper pocket to your bag. 
I have got my pocket lining piece just here and I've lined it up equally in from the sides. Um, I've got stripes so I've tried to match up my stripes too but I think that's going to be a bit of a step too far. I've got a zip which measures 9 inches and so I've left a gap at the top just here because the bag is going to have a seam allowance and this will be the bottom of the bag just here so I've decided where I want my pocket to fall about there and then an inch and a half down from the top I've drawn a line across and then two inches down from the top another line so there's a half inch gap in between I found the centre of the fabric my zip is going to want to go central between these two parts measured nine inches so now I have a rectangle here which is nine inches long and a half inch wide and I'm going to just secure this in place on the outer panel with a few pins because I don't want that moving around as I sew and when I take it to the machine I'm going to stitch around the outside of that rectangle so I will join these two pieces of fabric together at the same time and I will create an opening in this outside piece which is going to have the zip. So I'll stitch that together and then we'll come back and look at opening that gap up and adding in the zip. So I've sewn all the way around the outside of my rectangle and it's time to cut. So I've drawn a line through the centre of the rectangle here from one side to the other and snipped this line open. At the end made a little triangle and snipped far, far into these corners, as far as I can, so that it'll get a nice sharp turn, but obviously without snipping through these stitches. So I'm just going to complete the other end of my rectangle, cut all the way through that fabric, both layers, and then snip into these corners. That's it. And now we have to pull the pocket lining through to the inside of the bag. So it's going to look and feel a bit odd. But if we open up the hole, put the lining through, and we're going to pull it out the other side. And as we do it, now you can see that there's a hole in the outside of the bag. And we need to take this to the ironing board and press. Um, it's never going to look beautiful on the inside. You're always going to get little puckers around these corners, so don't worry about that. Just try and make the outside look nice and the inside, no one's going to see that anyway. So I'll press this now and return and we'll see what it looks like. So this hole in the outside of the bag is now completed. I pressed it and it looks quite neat from the outside. A few little puckers on the inside, but we aren't worried about that. Now as we turn to the inside, you are going to be introduced to my secret weapon. This is a little product called Wonder Tape. And our next job, of course, is to sew the zip into the bag. But if I try to pin it, it's already going to be all puckered before I even start to sew. And I really need to try and get a nice, neat finish. So I've got some Wonder Tape here, and it's a double-sided adhesive designed for fabric. So if I pull off these pieces of tape now, it becomes sticky which means that I can now put the zip in place. Now I've, this is a little bit stretched, I'm just going to put these together, try and make them quite even, and put my zip in the gap. How does that look? Looks good from this side. I'll now double check from the front. Looks good, a little bit uneven there, so let me just lift Lift up this side, position it in a little closer. And I can reposition it with this tape until I'm happy that I've got the zip oops, positioned where I want it. Okay, that looks good. I'll just press down to make sure that that's going to stick in place. Lovely. So this is what it will look like once it's finished. Great. Make sure the zipper pull is obviously shown on the outside. And I'm now going to take this back to the sewing machine and just run um, a regular line of stitches around the end of that, tri of that rectangle. And that's going to hold the zip in place. And that means I can sew from the front to make sure that I'm getting a nice finish. So I'll do that and then we'll take a look. 
So the zip's now sewn in place. This is what it looks like from the inside and from the outside. So that's good. Everything working beautifully for our zip. Now we need to just complete the pocket lining. And that's very simple. Just turn up the bottom of the lining, pin it in place around the three open sides. And we need to just sew around those open sides to close the pocket. Obviously what we don't want to do is sew all the way through into the outside panel of the bag itself. So we're just going to show, um, just going to sew the pocket lining closed. And to do that, if I wanted to sew this side, for example, instead of laying it flat, I'd pick it up, fold this part out of the way, and then just sew this side. Same along the top and the other side, and then the pocket will be closed. So we now have the two outer pieces of the bag. This one with the pockets with the applique, and the other side, pockets again, and it has the zip. So we're going to put these two face together and sew them round to make the outside of the bag line up. So I want to start making sure things are going to line up. So I'm going to put a pin at this point because we want those seams to meet up on our side seam of the torts. So what's going to give us a really professional looking finish. Square this up. And I'll do the same over on this other side. Match up where these pocket seams are. There we are, these two match up just here. I'm expecting things will move a little bit while I'm sewing. It's not really critical that it's going to be exactly spot on, but of course it looks nicer if it is. That's the side stamp. Square up a little bit more on this side. And then we'll meet these two bottom pieces. You can see just here, I'm just a little bit out, but it's not going to be critical because that difference when I sew um, is going to be hidden within the seam allowance anyway. So I think it'll be fine. It happens um, if you sew in lots of different layers of fabric together, they can shift and move out of shape a little bit. So here at the bottom, I've got the centre seam on one side and the centre seam on the other. So I'm going to make sure that those two are lined up. It was going to be right on the bottom of the bag, so again, it's not going to show very much. Every little bit counts if you want to make it look nice. Okay, so that's the outside of our bag completed. So in order to stitch, I'm going to stitch down this one side, stitch across the bottom of the bag just here, and stitch up this other side. And then we'll take a look, that's what it looks like. So the outer part of the bag is now stitched together, and of course it really starts to look a bit of a mess at this point. I've got fraying bits and bits of thread everywhere, but it's going to look great once it's all turned out. So let's have a look and see how our side seams turned. If I look down here, I can see that this stripe is nice and even, so I've sewn it out together quite accurately. And as we get down to this side here, well, it's not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty damn close, so I'm happy with the way those side seams have sewn together. So now we need to box the corners of our bag, and if we open out just here, and flatten flatten these out. If you look inside you have the side seam and the bottom seam and we're going to put those so that they match and it forms a, a cross if you like and the best thing to do is to push one set of seam allowances one way, one set the other way and we'll stitch it like that because it'll lie a little flatter. So I'll pop a couple of pins in and then I'm going to stitch all the way across from one side to the other and do exactly the same on the other corner of the bag and then we'll have a look at fitting a, an optional hard bottom into the bag if you want to. There we go, the corners are done and now of course it's starting to look a lot more bag shaped. So let's turn it the right way and see how it's looking. 
can push out these corners. Make a nice sharp part in the bottom of the bag. Same here. Looking good. Okay, and there's our bag so far. Now it's going to um, stand up and look a lot nicer, but so a bit more sturdy. You'll be able to carry some heavier things if you put a hard bottom into the bag. Um, I've got this foam core board just buy it at craft shops and I'm going to cut a piece to match. So I'm just going to take my measure and measure across the base of the bag. It should be around five inches. Measure between the two seams. I've got 14 and a half, in fact mine's just a little under 14 and a half and I'm going to cut a piece of foam board to match that size and just pop that down in the bottom of the bag and we'll check that it gets a good fit, push it into these corners, make sure it gets a nice good fit in the bottom. Okay, so I've taken the bottom back out for now and we can put that back in later on. But it's time now for us to think about the expanding element of the tote bag. So the idea is that when you haven't got much in it, you'll have the bag folded fairly flat and then you'll be able to open it up to give yourself more room if you need it. So if you look up on the sides of the bag, on the end here, where we have these lines of stitches on either side. This is effectively the, the, the corner of the bag if you like and so I'm just going to finger press a line up from there and the same on this side and that shows the depth of the bag. So if this is the base and these are the sides this is the, the short end of the bag just here and if it was folded in half it would be somewhere like this and I'm just thinking right where do I want my snaps to go so they want to be fairly close to this folded area and probably maybe an inch down plus the seam allowance so about an inch and a half from the top so if I open that out I've got my marker pen and I'm just gonna put a little mark here and here and this is where I want to install my snaps but before we do that, I just need to add some extra interface into the inside. So I'm just going to cut a little square of interface in and put around the back of here. So it'll give it a little bit more strength. And I'll also do the same on the other end of the bag. So I've added in just a little bit of extra interfacing on the back. And now I'm just going to make a couple of holes with my seam ripper. This will get me started where I want my snap to go and I've got a little bit of fray check that's this one I'm just going to put it around these holes make it a little bit stronger too and then put the prongs through the holes in the fabric not quite made my hole big enough I think we'll get through there. Okay, it's through. Put the little washer on the back. And then I'm not strong enough, so I'm going to just flatten this out with my seam ripper. There we go. handle and that's one side of the snap in. Do the same over here. A hole, another hole, a bit of fray check. And get the other side of that snap. So what have we got? We've got a pointy bit and a bit with a hole in for this side. There we go, it's through. Put the washer on the back. Oh, still not strong enough. Okay, right there. That's it. 
So the snap's now in place. So that means you can put the sides of the bag together like that. And that now makes the expanding element of the bag. So this part here can be snapped together and then when it's more full, this will open up and you get a lot more room. So I'm just going to do the same and install the snaps down at the other end of the bag.